Chapter 1. On the Move On June 11, 1910, in a small French market town 50 miles from the Atlantic coast, Jacques Cousteau was born. Soon after, Jacques's parents, Danielle and Elizabeth, and older brother Pierre Antoine returned to their home in Paris. Daniel was an attorney and a personal assistant to an American millionaire living there. His job required him to travel with his boss constantly. The Cousteaus were on the move for much of Jacques' early years. One of his first childhood memories was being rocked to sleep on a train. Although Jacques was weak and often ill, he was determined. On a family trip to Deauville, a fashionable seaside resort, Jacques learned to swim. He was only four. When World War I broke out in 1914, German soldiers invaded France. Daniel's boss returned to America, and Jacques' father was out of a job. German forces surrounded the city, but the Parisians, with help from their British allies, fought back. Hundreds of taxicabs drove back and forth between the city and the front lines, delivering soldiers and supplies. The French government left Paris, moving France's capital to the city of Bordeaux. The Germans never conquered Paris, but life in the city was difficult as the war raged on. Food, water, and electricity were rationed. People were allowed only a certain amount of each resource. German aircraft, called Zeppelins, dropped bombs on the city. Zeppelins Named for their inventor, Count Ferdinand von Zeppelin, these enormous airships were hundreds of feet long. They flew higher than most planes at the time, resembling large blimps. They were made of hard steel skeletons covered with fabric, with bags of gas inside the skeletons, providing lift, and engines outside thrusting the ship forward. Zeppelins bombed London and Paris throughout World War I. Although their aim was poor, they could drop many bombs in a short amount of time. After the war ended, Zeppelins were used like the commercial airplanes of today, flying people back and forth across the Atlantic. In 1937, when the fiery explosion of the Hindenburg airship in New Jersey killed 36 people, the age of the airship quickly came to an end. When Jacques was seven, he and his family moved back to their village. In the spring of 1918, the Germans made one final push towards Paris. This time, the Americans were there to help the French and the British. The Germans were pushed back again. By the end of the year, a ceasefire was called. In 1919, the war formally ended. After the war, Daniel got a job working for another American millionaire, Eugene Higgins. In 1920, the Custos moved to New York City with Mr. Higgins. On the eighth day voyage across the Atlantic, 10-year-old Jacques began to come out of his shell. He made friends with the crew and explored every corner of the huge ship. In America, Jacques' brother was his only real friend. Pierre Antoine liked to be called Pac, the three initials of his name, P-A-C. Jacques decided to be just like his older brother. He would be called Jack. It sounded very American. Jacques did not like school or sports. He liked to build things, like model planes and boats, and he liked to take them apart and see how they worked. That first summer, Jacques and his brother went to camp in Vermont. That's where Jacques first began to imagine what it would be like to move and breathe freely under the water. In 1923, the Custos moved back to France. Jacques saved three months' worth of allowance and bought a used Path Baby, a hand crank movie camera. And as soon as Jacques got home, he took the camera apart and began to put it back together again. With the camera in his hand, Jacques finally shook off his shyness. Looking through the lens, he could talk to anyone, even pretty girls. Jacques made friends and they made short movies together. At 14, Jacques filmed his first full-length feature, A Cousin's Wedding. Jacques still disliked school. His grades were bad, and he was more interested in making movies than sitting quietly in a classroom. When he was caught breaking windows in one of the school's stairwells, Jacques said he was only conducting an experiment. 
He was testing the difference between a rock that was thrown, thrown weakly and one that was thrown forcefully. Jacques conducted this experiment on 17 windows, and then he was expelled from school. Jacques's parents took away his camera and sent him to a strict boarding school 250 miles away. Strangely, the school's harsh rules suited Jacques, and without his camera to distract him, he blossomed. In 1929, 19-year-old Jacques graduated from high school. The next year, he joined the French Navy. With his trusty camera back in hand, Jacques Cousteau was ready for a life of adventure. <laughs>